All right, Dr. Lemon Jelly, um, we talked a lot about uh, gum disease and how devastating the infection in the mouth is. Um, um, it, 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 it tell me, you know, when, uh, because the infection in the mouth is not so much about uh, losing the teeth and losing the bones, which will happen and which is bad and which costs money to replace, but at least it can be fixed. It's a mechanical matter and it maybe looks ugly and all kinds of stuff and costs money and here and there has a little pain, losing the tooth and going to a dentist and all that. But while this is all happening, a major infection is going on in the body. And that major infection, that yellow, ugly little, you know, pus, uh, which you would have when you have a, a pimple in the face or when you have a, 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 an infection in the toe uh, or in the finger, um, travels around the body. Why is it that people do not go and and fix their infection in their gum as easily because nobody would run around more than a day or two with a cut finger or a toe which is bleeding and get infected and putting a dirty sock on it and just let it be there uh, or a pimple and everybody does immediately everything to get rid of that infection in the pimple and in, in, in wherever it occurs and yet they don't seem to be doing that in the mouth um, is it is it not important to do it? Um, is there a reason why they don't do it? What, what's the <laughs> Shade some light on it. Well, it's very important, uh, and the process is very insidious. Um, it's not a painful thing, and a lot of patients only come to the dentist when they're in pain. Unfortunately, um, by then, it's too late to save certain teeth. Uh, they wind up with infections in their gums that can cause the loss of a lot of other teeth. And uh, if they have a lot of extensive bridge work uh, or implants or um, uh, expensive restorations in their mouth, if the infection isn't controlled and uh, cured, uh, it's like building a palace on a bed of sand. Uh, all of that uh, can be destroyed in a very short period of time uh, with periodontal disease and bone loss. Um, Flushed on the drain. That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, Never mind. To take Never care mind of the teeth. An, Never mind that while that is happening, you're poisoning your body. Every single exactly. minute, the, 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 the infection which is in your mouth keeps going into your body. And the fastest yes. way, there's no place faster reaching the bloodstream than from the mouth. That's very true, and it gets into the bloodstream. There's, there's absolutely no question about it. Um, you know, but uh, again, uh, the body has a pretty good filtering system through the lymphatics that uh, filter away a lot of the bacteria, but still some of it gets into the major organs. Well, why overload them? I mean, why? I mean, how many people do you know who cut their toe for whatever reason or have one of those fungus infections going on and don't immediately run to the podiatrist and try to fix it? How many you know? They, they do it right away, right? With taste. They do it right away because they see it, uh, it becomes a little painful, and they want to take care of it. With their mouth, a lot of people neglect it. Uh, they know something is going on sometimes, sometimes they don't, but even if they do know something is going on, they tend to neglect it. If they take care of their teeth, they go to their dentist every six months, get their cleanings, they do their oral hygiene the way they're supposed to, they can get a pretty good handle on the periodontal disease and bone loss and uh, uh, at least what teeth and uh, gums they have will be in good condition and then they can take their time with replacing uh, missing teeth and things like that uh, but uh, they should address that problem as soon as possible also. Yeah, it makes a lot, uh, an awful lot of, um, of sense. I mean if, they, if it is true but there are babies who are still born, not a lot of them, I think one or two cases so far in, in California um, but if it is true that uh, babies get born underweight, that's, that, that apparently is, is frequently happening with pregnant ladies who have gum disease. Um, mm -hmm. It's true that in, is, it, is that that's true, right? Yes, that's, yes, it is absolutely. So, uh, so especially pregnant women. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why would a pregnant woman have an infection in the body and right away poison the kid also and be herself the body being weakened? 
um, keep in mind that gum disease, uh, an infection here, it has what, like a half a foot to the brain and a, and a half a foot of foot to the, to the heart? Kind of which one you want it to go? <laughs> exactly. But, but you know, there is a thing called pregnancy gingivitis, where due to hormonal changes uh, during pregnancy, the gums uh, are prone uh, to getting inflamed. But most women uh, who initially get pregnant uh, go to the dentist, get their teeth uh, cleaned, and maintain them. Uh, they do. They do very well, and uh, uh, they don't lose any teeth after the pregnancy, which is an old wives' tale, which uh, uh, a lot of women feel the baby took the calcium from my body and I lost my teeth. You know, that's uh, that's ridiculous. Um, if they take uh, time to go to the dentist every six months, maintain their oral hygiene, uh, the gum tissue looks just as good as it did before they got pregnant. And and some women feel that when they're pregnant, they can't go to the dentist. The, they, they're, they're advised not to do that. Well, you know, maybe uh, they don't get uh, a lot of uh, dental procedures done, but cleanings they can get done, and they can get them done every six months. Right, right. And let me ask you, is sometimes patients I have noticed uh, by dealing with a lot of dentists, so dentists basically tell me that patients come for a cleaning, and then the dentist says, look, your inflammation in your mouth, your gums are in so bad shape, we need to do what's called a deep scale cleaning. Not yet a surgery, but like, you know, scraping in a little deeper. And yes, it costs uh, more money than a normal cleaning, takes a little more time, usually takes an injection where a normal cleaning usually doesn't. And then people kind of complain and say, hey, you just want to do PR, oh, I just want a normal cleaning. Um, and I know a lots of dentists who, if that stage is there, they, they refuse. They say, no, dear Mr. Patient, I'm not doing a normal cleaning because with a normal cleaning, I do not get out your infection. It's too deep under the carpet. Basically, the, you know, if you, if you imagine yourself, your tooth is a tree and then you have the ground and, you know, there's the infection between the ground and the tooth. It's too deep in there. I cannot get it with normal raking. I need to take a little chisel here. And, um, and, and, and so it just says, and if I don't do that, I'm not getting the infection out. If I don't get the infection out, I actually condemn you to eternal illness. And, um, and patients get sometimes upset about that. Did you have things like that happening? Did you have that happening? Yes, yes I do. But, but the patients have to be convinced. They have to be communicated with. And uh, you have to tell them the situation that exists and how it's to be treated. Uh, you know, it's, it's not uh, something that the dentist is trying to make money uh, with. Uh, if, uh, if it's warranted, sometimes pocketing or bone loss around the teeth can be shown on x-rays. And the patient would then have something visual to look at. Uh, you know, if the teeth, uh, if the gum tissue is puffy and bleeding, uh, all they have to do is look in a mirror and see that. They know that something is not right. Um, they have to be communicated with and uh, convinced that that's what they need if that's really what they need. Yeah. Because there are, there are, there are in my, there are, from what I know, there are more or less three stages of um, Treating gum disease depends on how far it is advanced, or four actually, if you count the normal, very normal, getting a couple of little food rests out of your thing, which is with flossing and, and brushing. Then there comes the dental cleaning, the normal six months cleaning, sometimes a little more often if needed. Um, then there is what's, what I just mentioned, the deep skin cleaning, where you guys have scraped a little more, but yet don't call it a surgery. And then there's a full-blown gum surgery where you really take the knife and you really have to go in very deep, because that usually means... Um, the infection is really far advanced. Uh, That's am I, correct. Am I right there? Yes, you are. That's uh, the gingival curatage and the flap procedures where the gums have to be peeled back and uh, all of the uh, tartar scaled off the teeth and uh, the granulation tissue which adheres to the inside of the gums uh, curetted off or scraped off uh, and the gums sewed back again. Uh, that's in the most advanced uh, condition. But uh, it does have a very... Uh, uh, positive uh, effect and periodontal uh, treatment uh, uh, does work so after so at whatever stage the person is currently he obviously has an infection he's poisoning his body minute by minute but whatever stage he has be it a normal cleaning be it um, be it a, 
a deep skin cleaning or the full blown, uh, uh, you know, cutting it and putting the gums flapping and back and stuff like that. After it's done, he's clean. That's right. It all can be treated. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Thanks a lot, Dr. Limoncelli. Thanks a lot. Very welcome.